When COVID hit, it hindered a lot of businesses, you know, and gyms in, in particular. For me, luckily, I just did phenomenally well. I mean, I sold out out of eight of the 12 months. I couldn't get enough inventory and they were going so quickly because people were staying in their backyards, wanting to play games, you know, they're staying away from other families and that, but I did really well. And I didn't know the direction I was going to go. The whole reason I created it is because good feedback and I want to get people together. I want people to socialize, I want people to have fun. I want people to build memories, hang out with friends, family. And that's what, that's what your gym's about too. You know, you're meeting people, you're hanging out with people, you're networking, stuff like that. Same thing. I just have a different means. All right, guys, this is Dustin Bogle coming at you with another episode of the Lunch with a Punch uh, podcast. And I'm super excited because uh, this is a gentleman that I was introduced to through a mutual friend, Larry Broughton. And uh, we had Larry on the podcast before. So if you guys have been listening to the podcast, you definitely know who he is and his background. But I'm a big fan of not just echoing in the fitness industry and just having people from our world gym owners. Sometimes you get great lessons from looking in people at other industries. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of share one of mine uh, right after I introduce my guest. He's a gentleman that has a really cool, unique set of products, not just one, multiple. So at that point, you call yourself a serial entrepreneur. Uh, and that is none other than Matt Butler with rollers, a yard game, and then a new product that we're, he's rolling out called Tally Tumbler, which is really cool looking. And we'll dive into that. So Matt, thank you for joining me on the podcast, sir. Hey, Dustin, I appreciate you having me on. Yes. So uh, just to kind of give the audience a little uh, sneak peek into what I was talking about earlier, uh, something I actually did in my gyms, I got from Southwest Airlines. And so we put all of our business expenses on our credit card with them. And every year we qualify my wife for a free companion pass. And so for the whole year, anywhere I fly, she can fly for free. And it's this cool little card you get in the mail. And I said, oh, my God, that's genius. I want to make a companion pass for my members at my gym. And when they've been with us a year, we will give them that. And now they can bring an unlimited amount of friends and family, which gives us referrals. And so that was not something I got from another gym. And so that story I'm sharing with you guys is to say, have your eyes open everywhere you go. When you go to a restaurant, when you go to a hotel, like, I, you know, that's an airline. You can pull ideas from anything. So. I'm saying that to say, I bet there's a lesson we could pull from Matt that we can apply to our businesses. And maybe even we have something we could throw at him if you have that mindset. And so that's kind of what I want to start us off with. So Matt, I wanted to just dive into your story so that my audience could get familiar with who you are and what you do. Tell us about your background. I know that, again, you had spent time in the military and yeah. also um, how you got into business. Where did that where did that kick start? Um, and, and that's always a fun story to, to share with fellow entrepreneurs. No, that sounds good. And I like the story that you brought up because I feel like anything in entrepreneurship, anything with marketing, you got to give it a try. If it works, you keep at it. If it doesn't, you stop, you pivot, and you just take a different direction. So that's basically what I've been doing in my businesses. Big thing is, you know, how can I save money, bootstrapping, things along that nature. But, uh, and also, you know, what are proven um, things that other people are doing? So, you know, I've listened to a lot of your podcast uh, yesterday and today, so I know a lot of oriented, fitness oriented people. So we'll get a little bit into some of the things that I do that's fitness oriented. I'm big into fitness as well. I got to hit the gym every day. I still got that on my agenda for today. Oh, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, I spent 20 years in the Air Force, retired uh, a few years ago. Uh, primarily flew on an aircraft called Joint Stars. So think of just a big surveillance aircraft. Uh, staring at the ground at the ocean. It's a 707 platform, so it's massive. So I spent a lot of time in the Middle East, Asia, South America, uh, flying different missions. Along that time, I was uh, just missing being home with uh, friends and family, stuff like that. I, and I grew up in Minnesota. So you imagine that, that long winter and you get that cabin fever. So when, you know, uh, March, April happens, you just want to get outside. So I was thinking back when on one of my deployments of uh, yard games, playing with friends, having a beer, barbecue, and things like that. And I uh, conceptualized a outdoor game. So I was real, I played a uh, uh, bocce ball quite a bit, was stationed in Italy. So that was real popular, going to wineries, playing games like that. Uh, American pastime, horseshoes. So think of that game. So I took a game, it's called Rollers. It's a cross between bocce ball 
in a horseshoes. Real casual game, leisure game. If you tear your ACL playing this game, you must be doing something wrong <laughs> because this is a, a leisure game like cornhole or bag toss. So since I'm getting older, some of these uh, active sports, I'm just not into, uh, you know, basketball as much anymore. You know, played in high school, little in college. So um, now I'm more into the leisure type stuff. But uh, that is a, uh, a game that I started about 10 years ago. I prototyped in my garage. I went from uh, selling church and craft fairs to starting off small, right? Uh, developing the right product. What Larry Broughton has told me is uh, MVP, the minimal viable product. So I brought that to market. Today, we sell it in about 800 different retailers. Think like Dick's Sporting Goods, um, the Amazon, Wayfair, Target. A bunch of different sporting goods. Big Five, we just sent some to. So yeah, real familiar with the sporting goods industry. Um, we've created some other outdoor games, but Rollers has by far surpassed um, any of the other outdoor games that, that we've sold. So think of Rollers as, uh, like I said, a cross between bocce ball and horseshoes. You have these oversized hockey puck discs. You roll them in an underhand bowling motion towards a goal. And it's just, uh, there's a point structure. So whichever side the discs fall on are the points that you get. So it's really easy to learn, but really difficult to, you know, master is, is really yeah. part of it, though. So you're always playing. And, you know, there's a lot of other outdoor games in the market. Um, this is just another one. But the whole reason I created it is because good feedback. And I want to get people together. I want people to socialize. I want people to have mm -hmm. fun. I want people to build memories, hang out with friends, family. You know, and that's what that's what your gym's about, too, you know. You're meeting people, you're hanging out with people, you're networking, stuff like that. Same thing. I just have a different different means. You know, I have a, you know, people going to barbecue and hang out with each other. That's the same thing. So that in a nutshell, because I know we don't have a lot of time, is how I created uh, the Game Rollers, which is which is out there quite a bit. That's awesome. Um, uh, I was just going to yeah. say, if you're in a competitive family, uh, that Thanksgiving football game can only go on for so many years till people start getting hurt. Like you said, you start getting older. <laughs> so we need some some other games that if people still got that competitive spirit. Like my son's crazy competitive. This is totally up his alley. We're definitely going to get one for him. But uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you, I, I like that what you said is bringing people together, socializing, because after what just happened, all this COVID madness, where everyone's been separated, they want to get together. They want to create memories. And, you know, yeah, like those classic games are very classic, but uh, people want variety. They want new. They want to try something different. And so I love that that's what you're bringing to the market, man. Um, so, yeah. And, it, and from what I saw, it can actually be played on any type of surface, right? It's not just one type of surface. Like, oh, yeah. So it's very dependent on whatever uh, whatever surface you're going to play on. So the bad thing is concrete. Those discs will roll forever. That's the bad thing. You could probably roll up the length of a football field. But if you play in grass, even if it's bumpy, sand, anything like that does really well. And so that's what changes the challenge of the game as well. Because if somebody masters that terrain that they're playing on, just pick up the game and move it somewhere else. And you're going to get a completely different feel of how everything's going to roll. Love it. Love it. So that, that was, you know, kind of kind of leading to one of my questions was one of the unexpected benefits for me that people came to the fitness side of things for, um, I thought it was going to be all fat loss, lose weight, help me burn these calories. And I started hearing the word confidence a whole lot more. I want to get more confident. I want to feel more confident in my clothes and just in my life. And I quickly realized a lot of people are coming in as fitness as the path to confidence. Is there any benefit that you've had a customer say to you that you didn't expect that kind of came at you out of, you know, like left field? You're like, whoa, I didn't build it for that. But that's kind of cool to hear that, you know, feedback from you. Was there anything like that? Well, here generically, what I'll say is I used to get mad at myself when I couldn't answer a question that a customer or somebody has because I thought that I'd. I just, you know, I'd get down on myself, but I actually look at it as the opposite way. I look at it as a challenge. I look at it as a somebody poking a hole in what I have, and it makes me fill in the gap and learn more about an area that I don't know. So I always love for somebody to ask me questions or challenge me on something, because if I don't know it, then I can just make things better. I can, I can build a better foundation. I think it's the same way in the gym. You know, I mean, whatever you're going to do, you need to change it up, see what works with you. Think of all the different muscle groups. Think of all the different things you're trying to accomplish when you go to the gym. It's really no different in business. There's a lot of a lot of uh, parallels to it. 
Love it. Love it. And, um, you know, in terms of your, your like your top customers, are these, are these families are these college kids? Who do you see buying these things up the most? See, that's interesting too. Initially when I started, I thought this is going to go in all the colleges. This is going to be played, you know, on college lawns, fraternities, sororities, things like that. But what I started to see is it's really more family oriented. It's people that are wanting to get together and get outside and socialize. This is really they're looking at it as the game is very portable. It only weighs about six pounds. So it's not like you're lugging around big cornhole boards, 30 pounds. It's barely sticking in the trunk of your car. This is people that are looking to uh, looking to not having to assemble something. So these are just, you know, your next door neighbors uh, that are giving, you know, me feedback. And that's what I love. I love to get feedback from, from people. I'm sure you do too at the gym. You know, oh, if yeah. somebody finds something, you know, listen to what they have to say. If it, if you start to hear a trend or a pattern in what they're saying, then maybe you need to listen in and that your ear perks up a little bit more, but you might get the off the wall person that says something, hey, you need to change this or do that. And you go, okay, noted, I got it. But once you hear, you hear a trend and 10 people tell you something, then you need to start listening to that. And I think that's anywhere in business that you just need to be open-minded as an entrepreneur. Because if you, if you pigeonhole yourself into... Um, just whatever you believe, um, that might that might be harmful to your business. So always be open minded. Got it. Got it. Okay, I love it. Um, so how did that transition happen? Like you were in the military. Again, thank you for your service. I'm always appreciative of people in the yeah. military. Um, how did you decide I'm going to get into becoming an entrepreneur and a business owner? Well, part of it was because I built the uh, game and the company while I was still in. So it's burning the wick from both ends, if you look at it like that regard. Oh, yeah. So I was working all day. I was still deploying. My wife would help pick up. We had some uh, people that would help out, uh, some 1099 folks that would help out on uh, warehousing, packaging, things like that. And then uh, it just felt like it was a, the right time to transition out of the military. I was just, we had all the moves. I moved, I think let's see, 10 different times over 20 years. And so I just knew wow. I was up to move again. And I thought, you know what? We're going to place our roots down. We're in uh, Destin, Florida, so the Panhandle, Florida. So if there's ever anyone listening here and uh, I'm located here, I always look me up. Um, but, but it just felt that it was the right time. And the business was really starting to grow at the time. So I knew that I had something to transition to. I had a plan uh, of action that I was transitioning to. So that that's, I just felt, you know, I talked over my wife, my wife, and it just felt like it was the right time. Okay. Funny enough, we were, we were just in Destin uh, early August uh, with the family. So uh, next time I'm out there, man, I'll definitely hit you up. <laughs> yeah. Look, uh, yeah. Uh, perfect time too. I bet it was cooking. August was oh, a little yeah. rainy, a little cooking here. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were loving it though. I love the heat. You can't, can't, you can't <laughs> scare me away. Oh, Minnesota. I don't know if I'd visit you there, but yeah. Like, uh, so. yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you, like, what's the plans for expansion? You already hit some very impressive, you know, uh, marketplaces and, and stores to carry your product. Do you have your eyes set on another big store? Is it another big move? Like, what's the next big move to grow rollers and get in the hands of more people? So I set myself with goals every year. I think out, what do I plan to do for the next year? Majority of time, I'm always looking to how can I shrink my margins, you know, so through cost effective means, either lower cost of goods, reducing my amount on advertising, things like that. Uh, I'm also looking at additional distribution. So one of the ones I'm looking at is uh, Bass Pro Shop is one. I've got some leads. I just got off a uh, earlier meeting with another large retailer that has about 150 stores. So that's kind of my goal. And then I don't set a number, which I probably could and should, but I just want to expand as much as I can out there and, and provide uh, the more that I can get distributed, the more volume that I can get out there. It helps me tell the story of how well the product's doing. So that's really my end goal is to do that every year. Love it. Love it. Okay. That's very, very smart. So we talked about a lot of exciting things that are going well, you're succeeding, you're getting into yeah. more, you know, uh, stores, but let's, as, as we know, there's a lot of failures that go hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. So is there any, key failures which we want to look at more as a learning lesson uh that have happened in the last year that could apply to another business owner it doesn't have to be just gym owners just anybody in business that you're like made a mistake learn from it here's what i learned i hope you don't make the same mistake um any wisdom you want to pass down yeah and that's the thing is sometimes i might um 
have a phenomenal week or phenomenal month of sales. And I think that I am just the smartest guy in the world. And this is very easy. And you know what? As soon as that happens, it's usually a failure is lurking around the corner. You know, we try and prevent as many failures as we can, right? We want to be uh, reduce our risk, but we can never reduce them to 100%. There's always risk with whatever choice we make. You know, a lot of it comes to any entrepreneurs is uh, financially, you know, and I can give you one in particular that's still uh, a little painful, stings a little bit. I tried, as we just talked about, what are, your, what are my goals every year? And so I tried to increase my distribution outside of the United States to Australia. Well, the sales there just weren't as good. And then I didn't do my research. So I blame only myself in this regard. I got a little lazy, I think. And I didn't look at the VAT taxes that go into there. Uh, since it's a wood product, it needed to be um, it needed to be uh, inspected and sprayed down because it's wood. So um, because of all of that, um, the sales were not that hot. I actually lost some money on that and decided, well, let me pull back and maybe this isn't the right market. Maybe it isn't the right time. I don't know if I fully identified it because I still get good sales to that country. But that was one of those that was just really painful and it felt like uh, mm. instead of a small leak, it was a drain just just coming out of water. It just, just was draining me. So with any business owner, you have to evaluate, look at the numbers. I, I try to... The numbers don't lie if you're looking at them uh, analytically. And I was just looking at it and I thought, you know what, it's time to cut this off. And I, and I stopped and just regrouped. And I think anyone has to do that if you're opening up uh, any business, a gym, anything. Uh, if you're wanting to expand, like talking about distribution, you want to open up a second gym, a third gym, anything else, you know, is it the right time? Do you have enough money? You know, what's your runway in regards to your operating budget that you have? Do you have enough to sustain yourself for six months or a year? You really have to map that out. That goes back into business 101. You have need to have a business plan. Look at the numbers. What do you expect from a profit loss? Um, you be realistic with your numbers um, because if you're not, you inflate them. You're only lying to yourself. So that those are just those are a few little nuggets of, of things that I can think of that you just need to do your due diligence. Don't get burned by getting lazy and not checking out, you know, your demographics. Are you in the right location? You know, do you have the right people? Do tests. Tests are, are phenomenal ways to utilize. You know, if you have a gym and you're looking at a location, how many people do you think percent wise are going to transition to that one? Does that open up more room than a current gym? Same thing, I think, with any business. I mean, there's a lot of parallels in that. So hopefully... A couple yeah. of those little nuggets are helpful to the listeners. No, no, that's that's wonderful and and funny. Similar, same mistake. Uh, you know, is uh, <laughs> I had three locations that were cranking, and I thought I was a hot shot. And I went to six, and and quickly found myself back to my best three. And those are markets that I just got lazy with the demographic. I was just like, I can open a gym in any town. I got the formula, and so. Um, you know, putting it in a bad part of town, not checking the demographics, not really doing my best to, you know, negotiate the best prices. And so, yeah, I think that that's something that, you know, uh, once you get a hot streak, you can feel like you're unstoppable. And <laughs> right. you gotta, you gotta check that ego. You gotta, you gotta like, I love that you're very number driven. I think that's another lesson that can be pulled from what you just said is that a lot of people go off of a feeling and emotion or and a feeling, feelings and emotions in business and not numbers of being data driven. And you almost got to be 99% data driven. And the other part is, is your gut and your, you know, your, your emotions. Um, so it's good, you know, for people to look at that stuff and to inspect what they expect in every area of their business. And honestly, like, look at them more, train your eyes, look, start to see the patterns. What, what happens weekly, you know, week to week, what happens monthly, um, cause some people, they might not even look at them quarterly. And so they're so disconnected from their, their numbers. They don't know what decisions are the right ones. Um, so, uh, in, in terms of your other product, tell us about how, you know, again, so rollers home run, it's crushing. You only have plans to grow more. How did you come across your other product? Um, and, and explain that one as well. So another product that I launched. So what I do is I'm sure anyone on here that is a business owner is always going to be listening for feedback and listening to uh, opportunities in the market. You know, mm -hmm. if it's your gym and you want to sell things, is it the right supplements? Do I, I want to set up 
you know, anything here? Do I want to sell any additional products? Is it clothing? Is it merch? Anything like that? So what I did is I listened to customers. And uh, one of the pieces of feedback is I saw a lot of scorekeeping devices that were being sold in the marketplace. And I saw a lot of people that were, um, were had some sort of drink, beverage, mixed drink. And so what I did is I created a, a product called the Tally Tumbler, which is a 30 ounce stainless steel tumbler, which is also a scorekeeper. And there's three different versions of it. There's one for keeping track of your score for tennis, uh, yard games, so that parlays into rollers, and then golf. So I'm also what I'm doing is I'm expanding outside of my normal demographics of yard games, getting into golf, getting into tennis. Uh, I didn't want to create too many colors. I didn't want to create too many versions. So again, try your minimal viable product. That was mine. I actually launched it on a uh, crowdfunding platform called Kickstarter. Not a lot of people know about that, but what people do is uh, you tell the story about what you're trying to get funding for, and people will pre-order the product prior to it being manufactured and made. And then once it reaches a funding goal, then people get the product later on. They usually get a discount, like say 25%. So I did that and I got a big chunk of money up front, but I also got validation through people wanting to buy it. So I knew that this was a good product. And so that's when I, I moved it forward. And I think, again, it goes back to anyone, test the market out. Don't go all in on something and see, does this look like it's a viable um, solution to what you're trying to do? If you see an opportunity in the market, don't go all in, test it out if you can. I mean, you can't always do it. It's kind of dependent, but uh, that's another product that I launched called the Tally Tumblr. You can see it on the website. And so now what I'm doing is I'm talking to buyers that are in sporting goods that I'm already in. And I just talk to them and say, what how do you feel about this product? And I, and I gave them a, a sneak peek of it prior to even launching it, just to get their opinion. Again, I want to get a little bit of assurance that I'm doing the right thing. I have the right product. I have the right margins, everything in there. So uh, that is another recent product. What I'm finding out is the golf one is just flying off the shelves. The tennis one, not so much. Yard game's kind of in the middle, but that's good. Because again, like you just said, and what I said, listen to the numbers, look at what they're telling you. And then, you know, make those decisions and choices and strategy based off that information. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. That's awesome. You're the, the man, like many entrepreneurs, the man of a million ideas. And so it's uh, <laughs> probably hard to just decide which ones to take action on. Um, but like what your your intuition kind of gets matched with is demand in the market. Because like we can have ideas all day, but if there's not a huge demand, we're going to have a lot of struggle trying to move that. Um, and so I wanted to ask about, your marketing strategy, obviously getting into these, you know, dis distribution front, these storefronts is huge, but what about uh, online advertising? Do you have paid ads? You know, what, what are you doing there um, for anybody else that's trying to move product and, and, you know, sell more, whether it could be, you know, in their fitness facility, it could be supplements, could be something else that they're selling. Um, any, any tips or words of wisdom when it comes to marketing? Yeah, so we use uh, Google Ads, we use Facebook, we use Instagram, you know, and you don't have to be on every social media platform. We found out that Twitter does not work the best. Uh, Pinterest did okay for us, and then they started to transition to videos. And so the cost of somebody looking at an image versus watching a video is exactly the same, but you're getting so much more information from a video than you are a static image. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to if you're going to choose between them, an image is better than nothing. You want it to be a good, impactful image, but then multiple images are better, but even video is better because that can tell your message if the costs are the same. So that's what I would spend time on, the right photography, the right video. Is it for the right platform? Because if you're mm. using Facebook, that's going to be different than Instagram. If you're trying to get into TikTok, which is real big, what's going to be the value of somebody watching what you're doing? Are you doing an explanation video? Are you doing something funny for entertainment? So uh, my, my point is you can't do all of them. Or I mean, you can. I'm just saying the probability is to get to what works for you digitally. You know, And if you have a digital footprint, how can you um, optimize your website by having the right headers, um, the right locations, uh, do you have a newsletter that's automated? So if somebody signs up for a discount or for something on there, are you getting uh, 
Are you getting uh, something reviews or information back from them? Is there a way to recycle that email and upsell them other products into the future or discounts? Or, you know, if you're opening up a new store, you have a new product, like it's, it's, it's been proven that it's more costly to acquire a new customer than it is to utilize current customers. But, you know, for me, sometimes it can be a little difficult because I don't have a lot of products. I have a few products. So if somebody has both products, then what do I sell them? So, you know, I'll segregate my audience from email and that. So, you know, I get more and more involved into digital marketing because I want to inform myself. I don't want to outsource it yet um, because I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. So once I outsource it, that I can at least talk to them about what's going on here. I can look to make sure my return of investment, uh, my sales acquisition, all those numbers. Again, remember we said numbers don't lie. You got to look at those numbers very closely. No, I love that. Um, and I was going to ask you because, you know, uh, you mentioned investment. Uh, I like when, you know, we share what are things that we've invested in that have really grown our business. It could be, you know, like this great book that really, you know, taught you a valuable lesson. It could have been a course. It could have been hiring a coach or mentor, joining a mastermind. So what have been one or two like very instrumental investments that like you're like this was totally worth it oh my god you know it, it was amazing and so um is there anything that comes to mind when you kind of think of that i would say being so there's an organization that's a nonprofit. it's called score it's c-o-r-e dot org and what that is is a mentor mentee relationship so say for example somebody is opening a gym or any type of business, you can go to that organization and they will try and match you up to somebody that's within that business, uh, you know, profile. I have that information. Um, that is one, you know, free tool, a tool that's out there, but talking to other people in the industry is important, the networking perspective. So for example, uh, 2019, prior to COVID, I was on a trade show mania i think i went to about seven or eight trade shows which was great not only talking about the product selling the product connecting up with retailers but really networking so even networking with other businesses that are out there you know you've you've really got to develop um that relationship with other people so is it going to be uh, clothing merch is it going to be supplements you know for me is it manufacturing is it packaging is it marketing is it buyers from different retailers so you have to find out what, what's your overall strategy? Are you looking to be local? Are you looking to be uh, you know, throughout the United States? Are you looking to be you know, outside the United States? And I gave you my little story where I started to try and do that and I got a little bit burned right off the bat. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna re-attack it you know, if it's the right time or it's the right angle. You know, maybe Europe's better, I don't know, but that just goes back into networking is a really crucial key. Um, you know, network with people across the country because you want to get a feel, you know, how is it different from Texas versus Florida versus the Midwest? Is there, is there different uh, seasons where people are coming in and out? Can you take advantage of them? So for example, rollers is very, very seasonal. You know, our pinnacle selling season is April, May, June, July, a little bit August. Then, then sales go way down because people are going back to school. It's getting a little cooler out. And then I have the big spike in the holiday sales and then it cools back down. So I have this big signed wave of sales. I used to look at that. Is that a problem? You know, it's, it's really not because now during that slower selling season, I can re-strategize, I can regroup and I can try and figure out how to push through my sales. Maybe I'm out of inventory. Um, when COVID hit, it uh, it hindered a lot of businesses, you know, in gyms in, in particular. Um, my wife and I work out with a trainer and we went to their outside part of the gym and stayed distance. That was our way to, to train. We couldn't go inside the gym. Well, for me, luckily, I just did phenomenally well. I mean, I sold out out of eight of the 12 months, I couldn't get enough inventory and in. they were going so quickly because people were staying in their backyards, wanting to play games. You know, they're staying away from other families and that, but I did really well and I didn't know the direction I was going to go. Uh, so you just really need to take advantage of that. And, you know, even the gym owner by saying, we'll let you use the outside area. That was a nice pivot on their part just to be creative. And so um I, I kind of i threw in a bunch of things there you know talking about no no just it's being able to network yeah 
Yeah, no, it's good. And, you know, as you said that, I was like, oh, my God, man, you got to totally get into the Airbnb and STR space because people buy games for their guests and like leave them there. You know, like we've right. got many Airbnbs in Destin. We stared at one and they would have, you know, games for inside the house and they'd have yard games. And I was just like, man, what that's I don't know if that's an idea we're chasing, but it just popped in my mind that like that that's like you'll get bulk orders from, you know, hosts of, of those types of properties. Um, but then I was like, also thinking, man, in the colder season, when it is slowing down, you know, an, an indoor game, like a, whether it is a board game or something like that. So you can cover, you know, both sides of the spectrum, but I, I'm just spitballing again. I'm like you, I, I have a million ideas. So sometimes they're good and sometimes disregard them, move on, you know, but yeah, uh, that, that's definitely a, a good, you know, kind of like piece of feedback is we, we have a lot of resources and I think the best thing that uh, a business owner can really learn to get a handle on is their focus because your feed will be filled up with tons of gurus promising you a million dollars or this group, this book is the next book that will have the secret. And so what I read on you is you're very focused and you really concentrate on your, on your main products and that you just look at how to optimize them and how to move them more and like how to get them in the hands of more people and on the, you know, more eyeballs looking at it. That is a skill that is not easy. And I, and again, I recognize it because I've recognized when I see a very distracted business owner and like they're doing a new thing every week and they have a great business if they could just give it the attention and love that it deserves, you know, but we tend to right. think the grass is greener. If I get in another industry, if I try another product, you know, it's gotta be better. And then you get there and it's not, and it's like the grass is greener where you water it. And so I think, that's a skill all business owners really can, you know, always improve on. And uh, the reason you, as you see, I got all these books. I, I think one of the daily practices that helps me with it is to read. And I, I love audio books and I do audio, but you can kind of be distracted while you can do it. You can ride the bike, you can do your cardio and you're not giving it the attention to kind of like train your mind to come back to the page as it starts to wander in your daily to-do list. You're like, no, come back here, read this. It's a daily practice that helps. And so I can see that you're very, very focused on your business and like optimizing it. And so kudos to you for that, because that is not easy. And uh, I think that's probably the number one thing that I would say probably hurts a lot of business owners from getting further is like distraction in a world of it, you know, social media, email, pings and dings and zings. You got to really be very, very focused to get your your business to the next level. So I wanted to ask you, what do you, what do you consider your strengths? Because that's me as an observer kind of looking at you and seeing a strength but what would you say is like, these are my strengths. I'm awesome at this. This, I definitely delegate. I get it off my plate. Um, I'm not strong in this area, which we all have those, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Everyone's made differently, right? You know, and there's things you like to do and you don't like to do. So the, the biggest piece of advice I can give to any business owner is get to know all the aspects of your business. Find out what you like to do and what you don't like to do. So everything that I don't like to do, I start to outsource, but I want to understand it first. I don't want to outsource it, give it to somebody that may be talking, you know, something that I, I'm not familiar with. And I'll give you an example. Um, I don't like to do finances. I don't like to roll up the numbers. I don't like to do my taxes. I don't like any of those, but that's a very, very critical part of your business yeah. is to do that but so i have to get to know them i know how to do them i just i don't like to do them but so what i do is i let somebody else do them and then i review them so but i like to go to trade shows i like to interact with people i like to try different marketing things you know i love ideas if somebody throws me a couple ideas like you just did about airbnb and connecting up with them from like a strategic level of getting more games in there i love it give it a try you know because guess what if it doesn't work hopefully it didn't drain you too much maybe just some of your sweat equity just your time and maybe yep. not too much financially but but definitely give it a try um you know my characteristics is i'm persistent um i have a lot of tenacity i just will never give up um i'm a marathon runner in, in regards that i'll just keep going and going uh sprinting you know is good too but um, that's, that's one of my strengths. And so same thing at the gym, you know, I just, I know I've got to plug away time. I've got to go in there. I'm not going to change my body from, you know, from day one to day seven. I just need to be realistic with my goals. Same thing with the business. I'm not looking to, you know, 
uh, be flying a golf stream, you know, this next year from selling yard games, but, you know, it's just being realistic with that and having that, um, you know, other thoughts, a critical thinker. I just like to, um, get down to the information, have critical thought when it comes to things. If somebody tells me something, I need to verify and validate, make sure that, you know, that is the right information that's being provided. And as business owners, we're thrown every single which way, right? If you're a business owner, you've got your president hat on, you've got your finance hat on, you've got, you know, um, you might be building maintenance, you might be, you know, all sorts of different things you're doing. And uh, that's, that can be difficult at times, you know, it's like, which hat should I be wearing at this time? Which part should I outsource? And my first piece of advice is the things that you don't like to do because they may drain you uh, because you don't like to do them. And if you, and somebody else might like to do them. I've got friends of mine uh, that sell insurance and other products like that. It's like um, audio ambient to me. It'll just knock me out. I just don't have interest in it. You yeah. know? So <laughs> anyways, keep, keep your strengths going, find out what they are and keep them going. Love it. Love it. Yes. And again, I think it's reassurance because some people will give themselves a guilt trip if they can't do everything and you know it's more about accepting what are your strengths double downing on those and then delegating and hiring out the things that you're not strong in instead of trying to learn it you're probably going to waste a lot of time money and energy to become you know what comes easy to somebody else for you to just kind of like meet the low level of, of, of their skills you know so uh yeah. i'm with you uh, on all that. Um, Matt, this has been awesome, man. I'm, I'm super, you know, grateful that we got connected and we got you here on the podcast. And, um, I think you can expect probably a good amount of orders from my audience that likes to be outside. Um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, Hey, to all my gym owner and coach, like, this is a great way to get your clients outside. Like, um, it's, it's like a little sneaky way. Cause the, the, our mindset can be always like, extra, like get them outside. They gotta be running and cycling and all. No, just on their feet, moving around is usually what most people need because we're sitting at desks all day. So just being outside playing this leisure game counts to their 10,000 steps, helps them get some sunshine, helps them to connect more with people and not being on screens. So I definitely encourage you guys to go check it out. We'll definitely have the links to both products uh, in, in the show notes. Rollers, again, probably the, the one that is great for families. And then uh, the Tumblr tally is for your golfers, tennis players, and people playing yard games and kind of getting a two for one, their drink and their scorecard right there all in yeah. one place. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, thank you so much. Uh, any parting words that you would want to share to, uh, again, could be gym owners, coaches, but just business owners in general, um, any words of wisdom that you want to kind of leave them with as we end here? Well, Dustin, I appreciate you having me on. I know I'm probably a little bit uh, different from some of the other ones you might have had on. And so hopefully for the audience, I provided a little bit of value. Hopefully you know, we brought in a different category of a product versus uh, gym owners and that. So hopefully there's a little bit uh, of value brought from me to you that there's a lot of even parallels in between what I do to what you do. Um, if you ever want to reach out, feel free to reach out. I'm really not that hard to find. And uh, I know as being a business owner and entrepreneur that you're going through a lot. I know that there's ups and downs, you know, we're all here to support you in any way we can. I think that entrepreneurs are phenomenal in helping each other out because they know all the pit falls that people can fall into and nobody wants anyone to fall into those. They want everyone to succeed. That's at least the mindset you should have. You want that positivity of other people succeeding and you want the best for them. So uh, that's my parting thoughts is, you know, help each other out. Um, and if I was of any value, pass it on to other people. And yes. uh, I just, again, appreciate you having me on. All right. Well, thank you so much, man. Uh, kudos to you. And again, uh, nothing but cheers to future growth with uh, both products and any future products you create. So thank you again, Matt. <laughs>